Hey everyone, I am finally back from my vacation to Mexico. It was a much needed break and I got a healthy balance of rest and relaxation as well as some adventure time. To be honest, the trip kind of got off to a goofy start. Um, I was going through airport security and one of my many devices that I carry randomly kicked on and it was basically this flashing light in my bag as it was going through the scanner. And at this point I'm thinking, well, there goes my vacation, but nobody at the TSA stopped me. And just think about that the next time that you fly. So like, I need to take off my shoes, okay, cool. But don't mind me as I slip this blinking device through your security. Anyway, for those that have never visited Cancun or Riviera Maya, it's an absolutely gorgeous spot. And most importantly, it's relatively inexpensive to visit. Um, there's all-inclusive resorts that line the coast, and I've never been to one that was anything less than amazing. This trip I spent with my good friends Lawson and Suzanne, whom you may have met on one of the live shows or perhaps some past video. We do a lot of vacationing together. In addition to the resorts themselves, there's all kinds of outdoor excursions that you can do, which range from visiting Mayan ruins to animal sanctuaries, to um, like extreme sports parks with like zip lining and stuff. This time around I didn't do any of those, um, mainly because I've done them in past visits and I wanted to spend more time diving during this trip, which I am sure is more of interest to you guys anyway. I managed to get in a total of three dives. The first dive was um, on a reef, basically a reef dive. The second one was an unfed shark dive and the last one was a really big shark dive where they were definitely being fed. The reef dive was just okay today. I didn't see a ton of coral in this section of the reef, but there were some really cool large sponges as well as some really big critters. I like to chronicle these dives because I think it's important for reef hobbyists to see what these reefs really look like and how they're different from each other as well as what we keep at home. This dive was a bit of a struggle for me because the mask I got was just taking on water the whole time. So for those of you that are unfamiliar with diving, it's not completely uncommon for water to get into your mask while you're down there. And you can clear your mask by blowing air out of your nose and pushing the water out. It's an important technique because once you're down to about 60 feet like we are here, you can't just swim to the surface because of the pressurized air you've been breathing. It's going to expand as you go up, and you're not going to have a good time as your lungs get overloaded and explode. Also, there's nitrogen in your blood that will come out of solution and essentially foam up your blood, which causes incredible pain called the bends that could super kill you if you shoot right up to the surface. Long story short, most of the problems that you encounter underwater, you're going to have to deal with underwater, and a leaky mask is the least of your problems. So why am I complaining about it? This mask was leaking a lot. Normally, I would have to clear my mask once, maybe twice, but this was taking on so much water that just blowing it out would get into my nasal passage and into my eyes. It was so bad that I just resigned myself to just exhaling out of my nose the entire dive to constantly clear my mask. It was awful. Turtles are always fun, and I was able to get within a foot of this guy chomping down on something in the reef. This was called a drift dive in pretty strong current. So the idea is that you just glide along and stick somewhat close to your dive crew without spending very much energy. I only really felt the current when trying to get in position to take shots like this. So swimming over to the turtle is like getting hit in the face with a wall of water and it stands you right up. I was able to get some good shots though. Same deal here with this baby nurse shark, it's just chilling under this brain coral. Really, really strong current, but I at least got some footage. Again, to put it into perspective, it's like if you try to fight against this current, it just whisks you away. So. I, I apologize for the less than stable footage. On the second dive, we shot straight to the bottom and basically hoped to see a shark. If one didn't show up after 10 minutes, we would continue on to another reef patch. 
but we definitely saw something. The dive master pointed over to my left, and the first thing that I saw was a couple of large remoras, which I thought that's what he was pointing at. But then this really big bull shark came out from that distance. If I had to guess, she was probably a full 8 feet in length and did about 10 passes around us. I learned that all the bull sharks in this area are female, and most are pregnant. They come down south to feed and give birth, while the males stay in the north. Bull sharks are cannibalistic, and these females would pretty much eat the smaller males if given the chance. The strangest feeling though about this dive was when the shark was going to do a close pass, I felt like the current was sucking me in towards her, and it was definitely an eerie feeling because I didn't want to wind up like directly in her path. Up to this point, I've done two dives, and my camera worked just fine. Unfortunately, something about this last dive totally screwed it up. All of the buttons on the camera worked except for the record button. It must have had something to do with like the pressure as this dive was deeper than the others and maybe that made the housing malfunction. I probably tried to press that stupid record button like a hundred times and it just didn't do anything. The thing is, once I got back on the boat, the camera turned on just fine. So I'm chalking this one up to pressure, so next time I know to just uh, turn the camera on at the surface and just record the whole damn dive. Since I didn't get any footage of my own during the really big shark dive, here is a totally accurate reenactment of this dive. Trust me, it looked just like this, so you're not missing anything. Nothing at all. Just kidding. Even though I didn't get any footage from my vantage point, the dive company had their own photo video guy down there and he took this footage. I had to buy it of course, but what the heck was I going to say after not getting any footage of my own? I've wanted to do this bull shark dive in Playa del Carmen for a while now. I wasn't eligible in the past because not only do they want you to be certified, but they prefer that you have at least 30 logged dives so the company would be a little bit more confident that you wouldn't just panic and screw up the dive for everyone. It's also an 80 foot deep dive, which is it's a little on the deep end for a typical recreational diver. I got asked a lot if I was scared once down there, and to be honest, I really wasn't worried about the sharks, not even for a moment. For whatever reason, I tend to be really calm when it comes to this sort of thing. And my whole goal in this particular dive was just on the technical stuff. For example, we had to go down and then come up as a single like ball of divers because you really don't want to be a lone straggler around sharks that are being fed, needless to say. The sharks will follow us up, so it was all about managing my distance and buoyancy in the water column just to kind of stay, stay in that tight cluster. I don't know if the video captures how close these sharks come to us when we're all lined up there. There were several times that a shark was within maybe a foot or two of my face mask. The guy on the end afterwards said he got bumped about 10 times by sharks as they would come around, and he had to do everything in his power not to freak out. If you're certified in diving, I highly recommend the bull shark dive. It was a lot more fun than I thought it would be, and I would probably do it again in the future. Anyway, that's it from here. Happy reefing, everyone.